So it feels like you know, we, we talked about it, we've talked about it for years now, that we've just taken the, uh, the paper process, uh, pre-internet, we moved that process online with the applicant tracking systems, which were really you know cumbersome. Uh, and this is probably the first time where we're really moving toward real process efficiency. Um, would you agree with that? And, and, and why was this the point? Where we had tech before, we could have done it, we could have done it in several ways, process methodology, what have you. But why is this the point where the, really the industry is being forced to be more efficient? That was the inflection point because conversational AI is a transformative technology. So everyone knows how to use it. All you have to do is talk or type. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I think about um, some of our folks in, in restaurants that, that what, what the, someone wants when so they want a job is they want to talk to the decision maker as fast as possible. Yeah. And so they're not always behind the counter, but how can we get conversational AI to gather the information that we, that we need by having them talk? They know how to do that. They're not a system training for that. Right. Um, be integrated with the, the calendar or the manager to know that, to have them show up when, when they are available to, to talk and get two people connected as fast as possible, closer to that decision make it happen. Uh, and, and that manager the same. Manager doesn't have to do a bunch of work. When we went and studied processes, we found all sorts of crazy things. People with the, oh, I review the applications once a week. Or, um, you know, they're, they're, oh, they're actually in the filing cabinet in the, in, in the, in the back. Once in the ceiling, actually. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, it was really kept job applications. Uh, but in the ceiling? In the ceiling, yeah, uh, as you'd expect. <laughs> um, but but uh, a conversational AI just takes friction out of the process to allow people to connect as fast as they can. So that's true hiring velocity, and Absolutely. and and we've seen, and especially on the you know the the high turnover yep. types of front positions, line workers, yeah, yeah frontline workers. Uh, th there's a lot of times that they won't even show up, mm -hmm. right? So. What are you guys doing to be able to help the velocity of getting that person, yes, hired, but then also showing up the first day? Anti-ghosting magic yeah. is what they deliver. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Um, I think there was a narrative for a period of time, and, and I think to, to both points, COVID really helped because there was such a tremendous shortage on the post-COVID rebound of frontline workers. So people realized, these. I can't run my restaurant. We've all been to a restaurant that's closed or has a section closed because there's no staff. Right. And, and you know, that people drive money in the, in the front line has been a really important piece. Um, but velocity drives behavior too. <laughs> so I think there was a narrative that, well, you know, kids these days, people are, uh, are just jerks now or wh whatever uh, myth maybe existed. Uh, it turns out if you, um, uh, no shows for interviews, for example, people would say like, oh, people always no show my interview. Mm -hmm. Well, schedule for really soon, yeah. like tomorrow or the next day. Um, remind them when the interview is happening and then let them reschedule if they have to. With those three things, we can get people to show up to 90 plus percent of interviews. Mm -hmm. I think people saying like, oh, I have your interview in two weeks. I hope they show up uh, and then they don't. Um, then blaming them, <laughs> the, the woes of society on that. Yes. But being able to take some mechanics uh, into that. Uh, and the same show uh, goes for getting people to come to work. So after we get all of your um, your, your processing ha happening, be able to remind them why they want the job. Uh, send them the video. Can't we wait to see it. We know when the first day is. How was it? Uh, we can't wait to see you tomorrow. Uh, uh, if you have questions, let me know and answer those questions automatically too. Well, talk about the, the difference too, because what we used to do is everybody went through the same process, yeah. right? And And not all jobs are the same, right? High, you know, we give it high turnover, you know, frontline versus middle management, so on and so forth. So there are different processes. Now that seems to hopefully be the standard. Is that what you're seeing with most companies where they're not just saying, okay, this is the process, everybody goes through the same process? 100%. Uh, is, is that and, what and it is? Uh, Companies that want to hire people yeah. are starting to specialize their process to who they want to hire, okay. which seems like one of the ultimate, like, Duh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I order a car differently than I order a sandwich. Like it's, it's just different uh, of, of what, you, what you want. But there was a time where systems were limiting mm -hmm. and, and people weren't doing good critical thinking on the process. And yeah. so we ended up with um, all sorts of things. And then when it started to hurt, uh, post pandemic with not having a frontline workers, unemployment got really low. Um, companies started to reimagine those processes and then they're seeing the results of, of actually having specific processes. And, and we've known that for a long time, right? Like the exec search was always sort of carved out. Oh, yeah. We do everything this way except for exec search. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. now being able to think, well, let's apply that to different parts of our labor force and, and that's made a huge difference. So what are some of those numbers just off the top of your head? You've got plenty of clients who have seen, seen dramatic differences 
What what have those been? Yeah, well, when we we saw uh, McDonald's take their time to hire from 14 days to three days at, at, at many locations. So, oh. and what was happening in those 11 days? Waiting, uh, <laughs> just people waiting to get to the box to to review applications, waiting for people to have the interviews scheduled. Yeah. Those types of things. We've been able to see uh, different um, clients have two to three hundred percent the applicant flow uh, of that. Um, we're able to see incredible gains from things like text to apply and chat to a, and, and be able to chat to apply. So mm-hmm. seeing a sign in a store, um, someone that sees a sign in a store has three times more likely to get hired than someone that applies online. Well, why is that? Well, they're already there. They know they can get there. Yeah. <laughs> um, they know the brand, so they, they, they want to work there. Yeah. And uh, they didn't apply for five other jobs that day. Um, and so uh, if you can move fast in those processes, we see that those people get hired. How do you take it from three days to hours or minutes. So we have clients that hire um, that, have, that have looked at the, the, the uh, interview process yeah. as, as well. So um, uh, FedEx, one of our, one of our clients, um, uh, t- does a single, um, uh, a single threaded uh, hiring process where they're, they're simply having Olivia uh, ask questions, uh, doing some pre-background checks, and then being able to give a, a conditional offer based on that so they can, you can get hired in under 10 minutes. So certainly a ton of positives uh, from this area. And I, I, lo- I love your fill this out and give it back to me. <laughs> and like efficiency was go home to our internet yeah. website right, and right. go to www, <laughs> yeah. expecting that they would actually go home and do that. That was efficiency. Right. But there, we've already created a lot of benefits, but we've also seen in the news some challenges. Uh, job seekers really think they're talking to a person. So when there's something scheduled, they believe that there's someone in the, in, in, on the counter that knows who they are, that knows they're coming in. And sometimes there's a miscommunication or, or lines get, get, um, get crossed. Talk about what you guys are doing to eliminate some of those confusing elements of applying with an automated system. A few of those are being sure that we're, we're upfront. So I'm, I'm, I'm the virtual hiring assistant for, for, for that and, and showing some subtle signs that um, we want to have high conversational quality. So the experience we're going for is that someone consciously knows that Olivia is not real, mm-hmm. but subconsciously feels that she is. And we measure that by saying thank you, for example, yeah. after, the, after you apply. So sub, you wouldn't say thank you unless the subconscious was acting in, in, in that way. I think some of the other things that we're, we're talking about is being able to answer questions at any type, time in the process. So whether it's about your before your interview, having the, the context to say, I know this person is scheduled for an interview. Uh, I'm going to give them a question about their interview. That's tomorrow. Uh, and being able to do that as well. And then I think the, uh, the, the, the third is being ha- able to have good communication with many staff at the restaurant or location. Uh, and so how do I know who's coming in and then communicate well with that? Yeah. And, and it tends to be if we build around those big events like uh, interviewing, um, then then we can get the right communication there and through the right medium. So things like text messaging and WhatsApp uh, and be able to send in those reminders, things like where do you park and what should you wear? Uh, who should you ask for? Those kinds of things. So again, coming down to both tech and process design to make things really hum. 